Hey everybody, Jason again here with GDT Basics and the video question line. And today's topic is on how to use multiple features for a datum. The question that was submitted is, I've been trying to figure out applications of common datums. Now, this sort of tool or methodology uh, that the standard gives us to use in the real world is goes under a lot of names. Uh, I've heard it called multiple datum features, uh, common datums, uh, dual datums, things like that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is we have a tool the standard gives us to use multiple features on our part to create one singular datum. And so we're going to go through a couple scenarios, probably the most common scenarios that we'd see this tool being used on, uh, and talk about why we're using it in this situation and how it's being applied and interpreted. So the first most common uh, feature I see this tool being used on is with cylindrical features or shafts like we see here, things that are turned around a common axis. So a lot of times uh, these axes or these shafts uh, operate on more than one critical feature. So if you take a look at this part in its final assembly, more than likely it's got multiple bearing surfaces or multiple bearings on uh, multiple features creating a single axis of rotation. So as you can see here, both bearing surfaces will simultaneously dictate the axis of rotation for this part in the final assembly. Not one axis from either of those cylinders is going to dictate the location or orientation of everything else in the final assembly, that is. So when we try and apply tolerances to these drawings, we can see that it's important that we probably care about the coaxiality or the run out of all of our other features to this axis of rotation because that's how it functions in the real world. We want to know the run out with respect to this axis of rotation. So we can see that we have applied run out, circular run out to a lot of the features on this part with respect to datum axis A dash B. Now that's not with respect to datum axis A and then datum axis B. It's a completely separate axis actually. In fact, datum axis A might be this axis right here if this feature over here tips off to the right. And datum axis B might look like this, and it might tip a different direction if the datum feature for datum feature B is in a different orientation than datum feature A. These two axes will be separate axes. They won't be coaxial. They won't be in the same orientation. That's just how the real world works. Nothing is perfect. But what we're going to do is we're not going to rotate around this axis or this axis. We're actually going to take these two features and create a brand new axis. And we're going to call that datum axis, datum axis A dash B. And now we can see that we have an envelope simulating that datum axis. And this would be our datum axis derived from both features simultaneously. And so we can get datum axis A dash B from datum feature A and datum feature B. And we can actually see the datum feature symbols right here on each of those features. Nothing on this drawing is referencing datum axis A and nothing on this drawing is referencing datum axis B. Everything is referencing datum axis A dash B. Now we can even see that our datum features themselves are being checked to this circular runout around datum axis A dash B. So we can see the inspection would look a lot like this where we'd set this part down in V blocks and we'd make sure these V blocks are parallel. And since they're the same diameter, we don't need to shim one up or down at all. We can simply set both datum features inside these V blocks and rotate around an established datum axis A dash B. And then we can simply bring in an indicator to check circular runout on all the features we see here. So simply rotating this around datum axis A dash B like we show, we can check circular runout on this conical feature or this cylindrical feature or the datum features themselves. So this is a very common way of using common datums or dual datums or multiple features to create a single datum. In this case, we took two datum features, datum feature A and datum feature B, identified them in the feature control frame with a dash between them, and we've established a new datum datum axis A dash B. Now, one other common scenario is to see this on two surface features. We can see here we have datum feature A as this surface and datum feature B as this surface. Now, why we've applied this tool in the situation is because this part sits down on two surfaces simultaneously. 
On the final assembly, we might have a surface that looks like this red surface here. And our goal is, no matter what happens, is we're going to utilize this purple surface and this purple surface to stop translation and rotation in two directions when we assemble this part to the final assembly. We're not going to align to this surface first and then this one, or align to this surface and then this one. We're going to use both surfaces simultaneously. And we can see that we've actually qualified this pattern of four holes with position to each other. And then we've re-identified that as datum feature C. And we're making sure those four holes are not only located to each other, but also making sure they're perpendicular to datum plane A dash B. And then we define that pattern of features as datum C. And that can control translation in two directions. And we're going to also be able to clock from that pattern. And that's where we see this feature over here the through hole and counterboard diameter being controlled with position with respect to datum plane AB, and then also located and orientated to datum C, the secondary datum. But again, like our previous example, it's not to A first and then B. What we're going to do is we're going to establish a new datum. And something unique happens here because our datum features aren't coplanar or like in the previous example, coaxial. Uh, in something like this, we can see that we actually could establish our datum plane AB here or our datum plane AB here. But we know, regardless of which zero we pick, we know the nominal offset between that zero uh, is going to be one inch. So I like to picture this one down here. This is our datum plane AB. But what's interesting is it has to utilize both of those surfaces. So it can't just zero out on this plane. So let's take a look at what I mean here. If we bring in a realistic situation, again, we're trying to sit on this surface and this surface in the final assembly. But if our datum feature A and datum feature B aren't perfectly coplanar or perfectly spaced from each other, they're going to be a little bit offset and you have to make sure to rely on both surfaces. So if we set the location off of just the left feature, we could see that we'd tip down. Right? And that's not what we want. That's not how the part functions. We would not actually ever be able to sit inside this material here. How the part would function in the real world is it would sit up on top of that surface if this point was engaging it. So we can see that if we used the right surface as our origin, we would also be below the surface down here. And that's, again, not how we want to interpret this. We want to measure the location of everything with respect to both of those surfaces simultaneously. So we'd utilize this surface and this surface. And the physical simulation is much more easy to picture in this one. We want to set it down and allow it to rest on both surfaces. Then we can establish our location and orientation for all of our other features. In other words, we can see that the hole that would go through here should either be 2.25 from this or 1.25 if you decided your zero was this plane. But again, it doesn't matter which one you pick, it's more conceptual at that point, but we see that we utilized both surfaces to establish our origin. So hopefully that answers the question and sheds some light on some scenarios where the common datums or dual datums or multiple datum features creating a single datum are applicable uh, and how it's interpreted and applied. So thanks for submitting the question and have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles